Hello everyone. My name is Tamara Ulana. This is Curtain Call. And uh, we do interviews every week with women in the performing arts industry. And um, yes, hey Miranda, yeah. And this week we are interviewing, or I am interviewing, Miranda Mulholland, an incredibly accomplished um, artist and arts advocate and just a million other things. So she'll be on in one second. And, oh, thanks, thanks, my jewelry. It's a gift. <laughs> thanks, uh, Alina. So yeah, this is Curtain Call every week and uh, we're part of Fab Collab Live, fabclub.ca. And today is Miranda Mulholland. So I'm just gonna welcome her here. Hi, Miranda. You're on. So excited. About, well, I'm excited every week. <laughs> I'm definitely excited about this week. Hey, Miranda. Hi, how's it going? Awesome. Good, how are you? I'm good. It's snowy out. What's going on? I know. I mean, kind of April always tr fools us, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah. Every year we're like, we're in the clear. No. Oh, no. April. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I don't mind the snow. I just don't like the slush. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny. Yeah. Let's just concentrate on that. <laughs> yeah. Just... Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. <laughs> how are you otherwise? Yeah, I'm good. I just uh, spent the morning doing some practicing, doing some writing, nice. catching up on some emails. Oh, that sounds like a great morning. <laughs> Stress-free. <laughs> right, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Well, welcome to Fab Club and welcome to Curtain Call. I'm so happy. We're so happy to have you here. I can't even tell you. Thanks so, for having me. Welcome. And um, like I was saying, we interview different women in the performing arts industry every week. And this week, Miranda Mahund. So. First of all, who is Miranda? Like, tell us, where are you right now? You know, where do you live? Where do you, where are you from? Yeah. Yeah, I was born in Guelph, uh, but I'm right now in Parkdale. I've been in this apartment for about nice. eight years. Um, I'm, I feel really lucky. I love it here. Uh, it's a very interesting street. Lots of good people watching during the pandemic. Oh, uh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm an artist. Um, I play the fiddle and sing. And um, I've been, I guess, professional for over 20 years now. Um, and I have a record label, a little boutique record label called Roaring Girl Records. Um, we've put out, I think, over 40 albums what? in the last, yeah, in the last um, seven years. And also, wow. I have a music festival in Gravenhurst. I know, so you basically do everything. You're like every <laughs> a lot tier. Of roles. Yeah. You're like everything from like artist to producer, record label, ad advocate, like you do absolutely everything. And I do want to like- But they all go it. together. I mean, it's not- it's <laughs> Well, not in you they do. In you they all go together. <laughs> yeah. So let's start, you know, like there's just so many things I want to ask you about. But basically like, first of all, like when did you start playing fiddle? And like, how did you even start at being a musician? What brought you there? Um, well, my brother started violin when he was um, four. Um, and he he's very good. He's very musical. Um, but I think I'm very competitive. And so when I turned four, I wanted to play too. When you turned four, I love it. Yeah. yeah. So I I'm a big Suzuki. kid now. <laughs> oh, totally. Oh, 100%. I did Suzuki violin and, and I always sang. So mm -hmm. then when I went to university, um, I went to Western and then I went to McGill to study opera performance. So I was studying to be a singer. Um, but a cute boy asked me if I knew how to play Celtic fiddle oh, no. and yeah and, um, and then never looked back I, jo I joined his band and and played I, I had to get a Natalie McMaster CD and learn how to you know learn how to play wow. uh, Celtic fiddle um, cool. to be in that band but um, <laughs> the after all my do. classical studying but yeah no it was um, uh, from there I just paid my rent playing fiddle in the pubs at, at school and um, and I just fell in love with folk music I just I love it so much Wait, I have a question. Do you still play with that boy? No, I do not. I do not. <laughs> and us, and us. I wonder where he is. He was wonderful. We actually moved to Taiwan at one point together. And he was great. Yeah, he was wonderful. Cool. Yeah. Was living, what's it like living in Taiwan? <laughs> what's it like playing Celtic fiddle and living in Taiwan? Um, yeah, it was. Uh, Taiwan is amazing. Um, we lived in Taipei and. Uh, in Tianmu, which is sort of the foreigner get, uh, ghetto, they call it. But um, uh, it was, you know, it was incredible being, um, 
and I think everyone should feel this way at some point, but where you are, you, you, you feel like, oh, I, I'm very visible here, you know, and it was, mm. it was great to have that perspective and, and right. feel like, oh, this is, this is really, um, this is really um, humbling to feel this way. Right. Very good point. Cause we don't feel like you and I maybe don't feel that here, but mm -hmm. I'm, I know a lot of people do with, and it's high in my mind. Of course, I'm sure it is with uh, the trial results and everything coming through yesterday. So nice just to be aware of that and think about it for a second. Mm -hmm. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Hi. Oh, this is my own. Hi. Enjoyed listening to Harrow Fair. McGill was my first alma mater. Oh yeah. Harrow Fair is awesome. Oh my goodness. How can we even cover everything you do, Miranda? It's impossible. So, <laughs> okay. So you're living in Taipei. You come back at some, at some point, right? Yeah. Came back. And um, then what happened? Went back to Montreal to, uh, to McGill and uh, Got it. yeah. Uh, Montreal, what a great city. I mean, I just fell in love with that city. I, I don't even remember being cold because I just loved it so much. <laughs> That's what people say, but I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so did you, when did, did you can come back to playing music full time? Yeah, I got a gig right out of university uh, with this fiddle show called Bar uh, Barrage. So nice. I moved to Calgary to be in that. Um, and I joined a Celtic punk band called the Mahones at that time. Wow. Love it. So yeah, just right into it. I mean, just right away touring, um, living that life. And the Mahones was really interesting because it was just from huge peaks to, to crazy valleys, you know, um, right. our first gig was in Halifax, first gig that I played with them, um, at the Marquee Club, which was incredible, still there. Uh, great, great gig. Jimmy Rankin was there. It was just wonderful hos hospitality, East Coast. I just felt like such a right. superstar. And then the second gig that I played with them was in Winnipeg at a strip club where it was strip club by day. And at night it was um, a music club and there was blood on the door. I mean, hair on the pillow. Like it was just one of those, you know, it was one of those from, from amazing things to uh, the right, real gonna, parts. I'm going to let the audience decide which, which is the peak and which is the valley to each their <laughs> own. <laughs> <laughs> but that sounds amazing. I mean, the whole thing sounds amazing. Are you still playing there with them? No, 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 um, no but ago. I was in touch. Yeah, I was in touch with Finny um, just last week. He's got a new solo album that's coming out. Um, yeah, but uh, I think I, I think I think he owes me some of my liver. <laughs> <laughs> I just got I bet. Oh my god! I bet a few years of that. Yeah, welcome to you. Sound like the class. It's like classic. So far, it's like classic fiddler on the road. I love it. Amazing. So then what, what brought you back here or did you go somewhere else after Calgary? Um, where was I? Well, I moved back to Toronto um, and sort of just, yeah, just around here and back to Montreal a couple of times. Um, mm. But again, just sort of playing with different bands. Uh, yeah. I was on the road with another Celtic band called the Glengarry Boys for a number of years, traveling, doing a lot of gigs in the States. Um, and I played, played with uh, Luther Right and the Wrongs and really just got on the scene in Toronto. I mean, mm -hmm. we're so lucky here to have such an incredible, you know, richness of different things. And yeah. um, hats off to, you know, the Dakota Tavern, because I think I was one of the first people to, to when it first opened, I lived right around the corner. And yeah. if you build it, they will come, you know, that was sort of the place where we all just would go and, mm -hmm. you know, meld our music and jam with each other. And mm -hmm. um, it was if you build it, they will come. I love this phrase so much. <laughs> Is that and baseball now movie, I understand right? your whole, I think I now just understand your whole life in that sentence. I think I live like that, actually. So I do understand. <laughs> but like, <laughs> if you build it, they will come. So like, I now that's an easy segue. Like, what have you built? You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah. I don't know if you started the Muskoka Music Festival, but you do. Actually, let's go back even to your own record label. You know, so you've gone from like touring with a bunch of people, touring all over, living here, living there, playing with a bunch of groups. How did you turn that into forming your own label and releasing your own like solo projects? Yeah, well, I was on the road with Great Lake Swimmers for seven years. And during that wow. time, I really wanted to write and do my own music. Um, and I had at that point, I'd moved to Los Angeles. I feel as though and when I'm saying all this, I've just been just moving around <laughs> following boys. But anyway, I moved to Los Angeles and lived there for a while. I can't say I haven't done the same. I can't. Okay, I good. <laughs> we hear you. They were always great decisions at the time. Yeah, so you uh, No, but they were, they were wonderful. And I loved Los Angeles. And um, 
And, you know, I made a record down there with um, Sean Watkins, who was a Nickel Creek, incredible musician. He produced my album. And, um, and then when it came to putting it out, I, I just really love learning about things. Mm -hmm. I like to get under the hood, you know, and find out what and how and why um, and take that upon myself. So um, that's when I started my label. And uh, Fontana North was great, and they jumped on board of distribution. Nice. So, yeah. Oh, I have, I'm on their label for my second album as well. Oh, cool. nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's great to feel believed in. I mean, that's really important. And it's, it's taken, but it's funny, it's taken me, I'm 40 now, it's sort of taken me till 40 to realize that rather than wait for someone else to believe in me, it's really got to be here. You know, it's got to come from you. It was like and, the hardest, hardest switch, mental switch to do it US. is and it's like brushing your teeth right it's not like you can just suddenly go okay I've got it I believe in myself it's like every day you have to you know brush your that's teeth. so funny because my mom's on here and I know and like when I was a kid I met the kids of mom correct me if I remember the story wrong but of Flori Yagoda right like a very a famous singer am I remembering this right I believe it was her kids and in Galicia in the north of Spain and I was like complaining I'm like I don't want to sing with my mom on the road blah 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 and they're like it's like brushing your teeth they said that exact thing they're like it's like brushing your teeth you just something you got to wake up you do it every day it's just part of your life it's so funny to hear this phrase like so many years later but yeah <laughs> well your teeth look great as well <laughs> <So> you're, <laughs> you're hilarious <laughs> <laughs> so do yours. Okay, okay. So great late of so seven years. You go to LA. You you said after Calgary you came back here, but then LA popped up. I love yeah, that. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's I see was what else. here. We had we had two places at the time. My boyfriend at the time was an actor and um, so we had a place in Parkdale and we also had a an apartment in Los Angeles, so we'd go back That's and forth. Pretty it cool. sounds a lot more fancy than it was. It wasn't you know It is what it is. It is what it is. Not everyone can say that. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> I did uh, love Los Angeles. I really I did. Love I love LA. I played I in a band. There. I mean, this is another thing that's so amazing about the fiddle. Um, yeah. Is that I went to um, I went to a little bar. Um, I think it was in Sepulveda in Los Angeles, and there was we were looking for a honky tonk, like somewhere to hear good country music and folk music. And this band was playing there. About like ten people on the smallest stage. It was like picture ten people on the Cameron House stage. Just yep. all, you know, and they were playing. Sorry. I've been one of those 10 people. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, me too. I was in Kevin Quayne's band, Mad Bastards. It was like that. But awesome. yeah, this and this band in LA, and they were called the LA Hoot Nanny. Love it. And it was sort of like a bowling league for a bunch of people in the city who had other jobs. One was in the army. One is a professional clown. One is a carpenter. Um, and it. they have this incredible group and every, they would play once a week. And so I made friends with them. I said, you know, I, I play the fiddle. Can I, can I come and join? And they said, yeah, yeah, come down. We're playing Villains Tavern next week, um, yeah. which was in Skid Row. And it was such a cool bar. And I brought wow. my fiddle. They didn't know that I was a professional though. So they, they were like, okay, this is in D, like one, then four, then five, then one, you know. And uh, I'm like, oh yeah. And just nice. all over the place. It was so fun. I and they just that. became my dear friends in Los Angeles. So I, I still, I miss them so much. I, I got to see them last New Year's, the one before, obviously. This nice. One. But yeah, it's interesting. Like that's my, that was my passport, the fiddle into that amazing group of friends. Yeah, well, it's so versatile. The fiddle. It's kind of like the voice, you know, yeah. you can really fit in. I played a bit of fiddle for a while on violin, classical in high school. And then actually at Roy Thompson Hall, which we'll get to, which is funny. I was in one of those like, kid orchestras at Roy Thompson Amazing. Hall, Toronto <laughs> orchestras. And then I played a lot of fiddle. Uh, oh man, I forget my teacher's name, but it was just amazing. Like all East Coast fiddle stuff, like all through university. So yeah, it's like just such a versatile, it's like the voice, yeah, really. You can bring yeah. it anywhere. You can collaborate with anybody. You can really do anything. It's amazing. Okay, so let me get this straight. You're in LA, back and forth, Parkdale. You're now in Parkdale. So we're getting closer to your current, <laughs> your current life, right? <laughs> we're on our way. And for those of you joining, welcome. This is Miranda Mulholland here. Um, I'm Tamari Lana, and this is part of a series that uh, I host, um, co-host every week, every Wednesday, and we feature different women in the performing arts industry. So here we are with Miranda. And uh, so we've kind of come to a point in her life <laughs> where <laughs> she's played all over the world. I mean, I feel like that's just an ongoing thread in your life, but okay. But you've played all over the world and uh, you're now back and forth between LA and Toronto. But how does that turn into where we are today? Like, so you have a record label. When did that start? Roaring? Uh, 
Yeah, Roaring Girl Records. Roaring Girl. No. Yeah, that was 2014. Okay, um, okay. And it's based on um, a Jacobean play called The Roaring Girl. Uh, my father is a um, he's a he he was a drama professor. He's retired now. Um, and that was one of the plays that he edited. Uh, and Ooh. I just always loved it. I loved Roaring Girl. I had a band called Roaring Girl Cabaret when I was young. Nice. Of course you did. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, a very popular mix of jazz, classical, pop, and folk. Cool. Maybe not the most, um, yeah, I maybe not hear the most popular it. genre, but, but um, no, super well, fun and, and cut my teeth there. Um, so yeah, that started really, because I, I believe so much. I mean, I think this is like you too. I really feel as, even when we met, first met, I really felt that we had, you know, that was like, oh, soul sister, I get, I get, you know, I get this. And yeah, you um, do way too much. I totally get it. <laughs> and <laughs> also just the collaboration part is so important. And I, yeah. I just love and value so much people who have done their 10,000 hours. They're really good at their game but they're also really open to, you know, like, like you, but collaboration in different ways. So for me, well, thank you. you know, that's something that's, that's always appealed to me. You know, I, I my violin obviously definitely done my 10,000 hours there, but you know, I can jump up on stage in Memphis and play with this crazy blues band, or I can go and play with the hoot nanny or, you know, and, and play in Taiwan. I mean, anything yeah. like that. Yeah. And then have that collaboration is the most. Yeah, that's got to be my favorite, you know? my favorite thing, my favorite part about all of it. Yeah, it's exactly. Absolutely. That. You can always find community them. wherever you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's really how the label started. Um, just like minded artists who have who are excel at what they do. But I didn't want to be a genre of a label. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be specifically one genre. And mm -hmm. that I feel like all of the artists who have been on the label and and all of the artists that I love are, are ones who take chances and try different things and um, I love it yeah go yeah. check it out roaring girl we'll post links we'll yeah, post links to your to everything you do oh my goodness okay Good so luck. not only do you have record label that you just said put out more than 40 records in the past seven years which is totally wild that's like a full-time job in and of itself but also <laughs> you have a music festival or you run a music festival called yeah. Muskoka Music Fest. Tell us about it. Yeah. Can we go, well, my, Can we go right my, now? Yeah, I know. <laughs> my um, my great-great-grandfather was the mayor of Gravenhurst, Ontario. And when he was the mayor, I know, he's so he was great. Charles That's Michael. awesome. And when he was the mayor, he had the opera house built on the main street of Gravenhurst because he cool. really believed that arts and culture can bring a community together. Love it. So, um, you know, and I, we have a family cottage um, in in Gravenhurst. And when I say cottage, I don't mean, you know, like helipad. I mean, you take a little tin boat, you row across the water to get there. And it's, you know, I, it's my favorite place on earth. It's just, it's oh. not, it's, you know, it's just magical. Um, and, uh, you know, I love that. I love that town so much. I, um, it means so much to me to just be there. And, mm -hmm. you know, as I said, like you, you know, you, you asked me about where all the places I've lived and, and living all those different places and touring all over the world all the time. The cottage has been my one place mm. that was has been my the you know, through line in my life. Right. The only like the place that I you know I went there in embryo and I go there every year. So um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I thought you know th this would be an amazing place for a music festival, and yeah. I kind of wanted to take the same principles as the label and bring it to the town. Um, and I went to um, Krista Story, who was the um, she's the uh, director of arts and culture in Gravenhurst, and told her about the idea and she jumped on board um, and then went to different businesses in town uh, and got little venues as well. So we have an art gallery is a venue and the Or, which is a fa fabulous restaurant. I think I've played at that art gallery. I think so I've played lovely. there. The little art gallery, it's so beautiful because I'm yeah. like, you must know our friends Beverly and Charlie, right? They, they, uh, they're like old folkies that play all around Muskoka, wonderful. And they do a winter series, I think at that very gallery. So great. Anyways, I'll put you in touch if you don't know them. They're awesome. Oh, I Beautiful love that. Yeah, artists. please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And yeah, just kind of, it came together. I mean, great people. Beth Cavanaugh is my publicist and she was yeah. on board from the first uh, year and she's been incredible. I have this amazing executive director, Chris Topping, who I don't know where I'd be without him. He, he is just, he's the spreadsheet person who, who keeps me grounded as oh well. Oh my God, we all need a spreadsheet person. Oh my God. Yes. I love all spreadsheet people. Shout out to the spreadsheet people. people. <laughs> shout out to the spreadsheet people. We love you. 
exactly. Like we could, I couldn't do it without him. He's amazing. Um, and it, yeah, it just grew and it's become the staple in town. Um, and I think one of the keys to the success has been um, kind of applying like Music City's principles, keeping keeping it within the infrastructure of the town so that mm -hmm. the spend can right. be on the artists and the spend can be on bringing, you know, yeah, bringing these incredible artists. We've had over 75 artists and bands um, to Gravenhurst That's in our, so in the cool. years that we've been um, a festival. So, uh, but again, the same sort of principles that applied in jo joining the Hoot Nanny or, or starting my label. It's all about building a tent mm -hmm. and the, the bigger tent and then bringing people under it. I absolutely adore that metaphor and that idea. And that will stay with me for life. I love it. And what is what's happening this summer? Are you guys doing the festival? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously things are changing. We have right now three different spreadsheets that are sort of <laughs> this this version, a hybrid version, and then this kind of version oh, man, of what I we're hear you. Do. But you know, I I am optimistic. Uh, we have um, a scaled down version. Mm -hmm. Every year we do. Um, most of the most of our programming is free, or we try to make sure that it's affordable. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And um, but then we also have these VIP packages, which, you know, for people who can ex uh, access that, um, where we boat everybody to my cottage and I sort of activate oh the outdoors and that we have um, an unannounced, amazing. yeah, unannounced performers. Um, so last year, so two years ago was Ron Sexsmith played and the truth. Nice. I went to here. school with his son. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you know, such funny connections between us. Oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So we're going to do something similar to that this year where it can be cool. a smaller group of people um, at a private place, all kind of spaced out. Um, and so I'm, you know, it's fun to start trying to plan something, you know, it's really, I want something to look forward to. And so it's been kind of a, a beautiful thing to imagine how to make this as magic as possible in oh the circumstances God. that we're in. If there's any way Fab Club can help, just let us know. Dream. Yeah, we're there. We're there to help. We're there to collaborate, as our name implies. <laughs> I love anything. It. No. Anything. Just oh, tell us. I'm please. already getting ideas now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just put everyone on a boat and send them down the river. <laughs> well, that was fun. One year, one year, what we did was we, um, I hired um, a band that was a sea shanty band. Oh, I think I know. I, I think I know. This. I put yeah, them yeah. on a boat, and yeah. so we, I rang a They're bell good. and got the audience along the shore and then brought the boat right in front of everybody and they sang I mean, totally to distanced the right there everyone on board perfect <laughs> all right so everyone go check out that festival and see if you can sneak in this this summer right yeah and then oh my goodness okay hold on there's definitely a couple points that i want to hear from as well from you so not only for those of you just joining does miranda have like ridiculous amounts of experience playing around the world in various bands and configurations and millions of styles as an accomplished fiddler and singer with opera training. Oh my goodness. Um, she also has a record label, uh, Roaring Girl. Am I, yeah, right? Okay. And, yeah. uh, you know, runs a music festival in Muskoka, Muskoka Music Fest. And, oh my goodness, you were just part of a huge campaign, which is kind of a, one of the things we've been in touch with this, this year, touch with about, touch about, oh my goodness, um, called, you know, it has various names, but really, for the love of lives. So if you've seen that hashtag, let us know and hashtag it down below. <laughs> hashtag for the love of life. And, you know, tell us, Rana, what's that been about? And, well, you, know, you know, how I did that even start? Yeah, it's, um, it's been pretty amazing. You know, I think one of the silver linings again of this has been seeing people band together and work mm -hmm. together and pull together as a team. Totally. Um, and Aaron Benjamin, <laughs> who is the, um, the director of, uh, of the Canadian Live Music Association has done such an incredible job. Um, you know, again, like big tent, you know, building that tent, getting people yeah. under it and and, yeah. and pulling together in a way that we have never seen with the live music industry before in this country. No. Um, and that's been incredible. So uh, I, I joined um, the team that was uh, working on that campaign um, in the fall. And we, you know, small and mighty team. I mean, they're all amazing. Uh, and we had a ton of meetings and figured out, you know, the tone and the messaging. Because obviously when you're um, lobbying, uh, it's very important to have a, a tone. Uh, I, I think you and I talked about this as well um, when we were in some of our advocacy work, but it's really mm -hmm. important to have a certain tone 
And um, so one of the things we really wanted to highlight was just how important music is to people's day-to-day -day lives, Canadians, yeah. and how much, how much the, this has affected, um, obviously, the people in the industry, but also fans as well. So mm -hmm. we encouraged everybody to share the photos of, of shows they'd gone to, memorable things that had happened because of music, um, mm -hmm. and use that hashtag for the love of live. Um, because again, it's, it's, it, you have to not, you know, it's not shaming anybody to do anything. What it is, is, is just compelling people, giving them the reasons to do things. Um, and I'm so, so proud and like quite emotional, um, about some of the things that we've achieved. You know, we got from the Ontario government, you know, a huge amount for Unison, which is a really important fund that helps artists in art Well, anybody in the music industry actually can access it. Um, and it provides emergency support, but also mental health support. You can sign up and, and be able mm -hmm. to have a therapist. Uh, and that's so crucial right now. And we got, you know, for the first time ever government support for that, which is amazing. Um, yeah, I, I think this is, I think this is the beginning of something. I'm, I'm really hoping that we can, you know, hopefully that. that, that oh, it already started. It already yeah. started. Let's be clear. Like it's been huge. It's yeah. been huge. This year has seen, I've never, like you said, I've never felt or seen the music industry come together in yeah. my life. And I was born into the music industry. So it's been wild and incredibly exciting to be a part of. Yeah. yeah. And then to see it, the budget announced this week and to see money for the, for music and for the arts and culture and also, and for specifically, you know, venues, which are in just peril right now and um, for artists. So, um, I was yeah, really just to be clear also... for everyone listening who doesn't know, like we're talking millions of dollars here, right? That have been infused into the arts industry through various funds, Canadian Heritage, Factor, what other ones have been affected? Have, and then there's one to Unison as well. Unison. Um, and then to, yeah, to Canadian Live Music Association so they can do their job, which is absolutely crucial. So yeah, so proud of the wins that we've had, you know, more than we even imagined. And yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Congrats to everybody that's been working on that so hard. It's yeah. going to make a difference in people's daily lives. Yeah. Like and that like, unison money will save lives. Yes, literally. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. And uh, it's been quite a week. What a week. Yeah. Whew. Yes. Congrats on this huge, huge deal. I'm, I'm so happy. And for everyone watching, don't forget tag hashtag for the love of life to keep the campaign going and keep the arts at the forefront um, and in people's minds and remembering that that is an important part of our lives over everyone's daily life you know I mean we all know <laughs> but just repeating yeah <laughs> and okay. yeah and the economic development piece too you know just what what music brings to the economy is is mm -hmm. significant so yeah absolutely yeah Toronto's supposed to be music city let's do it <laughs> right exactly yeah so that's, and I uh, will drop some links as well. It's um, the Canadian Live Music Association. Um, if you want to Google it, but we'll, we'll be dropping links as well and follow up stories on it on how you can be involved, but really just use that hashtag and post photos of live music and we're good. And it'll, it'll help right there. Um, okay, so last but not least, not only do you do all that, okay, not only do you like this, but I'm not sure if you're currently chair of multiple boards, at least one I know, or do you sit on other boards, but tell us, you know, are you, tell us what boards you're on currently and kind of your role in them. Cause that's also yeah. incredible. Well, this is really important. And I think for artists, so often people speak about artists or say, I know what artists want, or this is what, you know, this is what they would want. And, you know, like anybody, you know, if, if about us, not without us, you know, and um, I think it's really important that artists sit on boards of all kinds, you know, not yes. just, not just the arts boards. I mean, I think that's, that's definitely important, but, um, but you know, the way that an artist thinks or, or the, it's just, I mean, it does not even one way. I mean, there's, that's the beauty of artists, but um, to have that kind of critical thinking and to have that kind of emotional intelligence at, at the table, is really, really yes. important. Yeah. And um, so with all of my advocacy work and just sort of trying to seek, you know, fair remuneration for artists and just try to get in the, get in the, the rooms and get at those tables and have those conversations, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I joined the board of Massey Hall, Roy Thompson Hall, um, how many years ago? Five years ago, perhaps. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, and I've been on that board and, um, you know, and, and again, like I'm the person in the room, I've played on the stage of Massey Hall. I've played on yeah. the stage of Roy Thompson Hall. Um, and you know, it, it, I feel very 
privileged and lucky to be included in that board um, mm -hmm. and to be able to bring that, that perspective. Uh, and then this last year, I was just named um, vice chair of that board, uh, which is exciting too. I mean, I think there's never been an artist, you know, vice chair before. So this is a wild really to think that that's like a novel thing, but. <laughs> yeah. And I think there should be more artists on boards. And if people are interested, I'm always happy to talk about how, how to do it and how to approach it and why cool. it's important. Um, and find the training to to get you know to to get Amazing. ready for that kind of thing. Um, and I also am the chair of Music Canada's advisory council. So Music Canada is the trade organization for the major labels. Um, and my job there is really um, I, I'm sort of a liaison between the creative community and the and Music Canada, which is my professional job there, but also as chair to mm -hmm. lead this group of. Um, and lead by collaboration. I mean, that's, I think, the key. I, I'm not, you know, making any decisions. I'm just trying to, um, again, big tent it, make sure that everyone feels comfortable being able to mm -hmm. speak, give their opinions, um, meet, you know, help help nuance discussions, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm really proud of my work there. And those people are incredible people on that board. So, wow. um, yeah, those are, those I, are, I gotta those are ask, a couple like, of the things. How do you do all of this at the same time? <laughs> Cloning. <laughs> no, uh, um, I wish. No, oh my goodness. There's so many of them. There is just so much. You know, if there was a Venn diagram, it would be almost a circle because they all really do just converge. Um, I'm really good at time management. Like every, you know, like every artist, honestly. I don't know where we got the of being like um, artists who don't have that kind of time management skills. But most artists I know are amazing at time management. You know, maybe you not like in the 9 to 5 way. You mean just work 24-7? Yeah. 20 yeah. 7. yeah. <laughs> it's like 5 o'clock. Yeah, pretty. There's no meeting. Yeah, pretty no. much. <laughs> well, that's well, amazing. Like what, I had to learn what weekends are, you know. I, I oh, yeah. I my, um, my executive director, Chris, for my festival, you know, in the first couple of years working with him, like, he wouldn't answer my emails on weekends. And it was sort of like a quiet, like, oh, oh, right, a weekend. Okay. We'll talk about this on Monday. It's yeah, because that's like peak time for an artist. So if you're working both worlds, artist life and sort of organizer life, you know, <laughs> you're working at both peaks, right? That's why. Mm -hmm. Well, Marina, I can't even. <laughs> you're amazing. Everything you do, I just want to thank you, like on behalf of like myself, but like I don't know if I'm at liberty to say, but on behalf of like the whole community, really, because. I, I read this quote of you. I can't remember word for word behind, like it's from the Globe and Mail. I'm sure you know what it is, but it's like Miranda's like the sweet secret weapon of the roots community in Canada. And I'm going to take out that roots word and just say like the music community, you know, you're a secret weapon. Aww. People don't even know, but I've been learning this past year, all the work you do behind the scenes. And it's just like absolutely incredible and mind blowing and life changing work. So thank you. Really. Thank you. Oh, oh hey, Chris you. Sultans. Yeah. So, and Thanks, Sarah Porter Music, for all your comments. And I agree with everything you've said. I just want to say that. <laughs> oh, Sarah's amazing. And, Bye, Sarah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And thanks, everybody, for <laughs> joining. And before Miranda goes, well, two things. First of all, is there anything we missed that you really want to make sure people know about your life, about your music, about the work that you do? Um, just that it's, gonna, it's coming up on one year that um, Harold Fair put out our second album. Um, this year, this Friday actually will be the one year of Sins Perfect We Made. Timing. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm really proud of that record. Again, it was hard. We had a whole, you know, world tour plan, plan UK, US and, um, Canada. And obviously like everybody, you know, had to put it on hold. Um, but again, I'm so proud of that work that Andrew and I did on that record. We played all mm -hmm. the instruments and sang all the parts. It's just the two of us. Um, wow. of course you did. and, uh, yeah, it's a really, <laughs> a really cool album and I'm super proud of it. And, uh. And I can't so wait go to check get... it out. Buy it, follow it, listen to it, support, support artists, support the music industry. Do it. We'll drop some links that I mean, just Google you, Miranda Mahalan and you'll see it all. But yes, okay, it. so before you go, I have a final request. You might know what it is already. Would you please grace us with some live playing? Yeah, I got my fiddle right here. <laughs> this is my um this is my uh, my good violin, I should say. Oh, we're getting a special expensive. treatment. I think it's just my expensive violin. Wow. <laughs> so I, I ordered Nigella Lawson's new cookbook, and it came yesterday. And I sliced my finger open on the Amazon packaging or on the packaging from the bookstore. So 
Um, it's, so excuse my third finger, but um, we'll <laughs> give it a try. I'm sure we won't notice. So beautiful. Thank you so much. You were worried Thank it wouldn't you. come through the violin, but it came through perfectly, at least for oh, me. Oh, great. Yeah, way better than Zoom. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much, Miranda. Yeah, thank so you. Thanks, thanks for having me. me. And uh, for everyone tuning in, thank you so much. The interview will be up on Fab Club Live. And check out our upcoming shows. We have a show this Friday live on Bramble. It's called Girls with Gear. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And uh, no singing. Oh, you'll have to catch me next time singing. <laughs> Unless you want to sing or something. But hey, uh, one of our boaters for the for the festival. Oh yeah, Yay. he's requesting a song. He's requesting singing. Next time. What, what should we tell him? Next time. Next time. Jimmy, you're gonna have to come back, and you're gonna have to download her full album. Okay, to hear her singing. But yeah, come tune in. We'll drop the link. Our next Fab Club show is on Friday. And it's featuring uh, electro music, uh, electro acoustic um, uh, women, also in the performing arts industry, of course, because you know, so cool. I'm not biased. I'm not biased at all. But uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, every Wednesday, next Wednesday is a poet, and it's gonna be hosted by Leah Granger right here on Fab Club Lives Curtain Call Instagram page. And that's it, I guess, for today. So Miranda, thank you so much. Thank Absolutely love time. talking to you. You're amazing. And uh, see you everyone soon, guys. See ya. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.